Welcome back to section 8 of chapter 5. In this section, we'll be looking at curve fitting with quadratic models. We did this earlier this year, way back in chapter 2, with linear models, and we'll be doing it more later on. We'll be doing it again in chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter um, 8, chapter 9, and so we will keep coming back to this. But curve fittings, we're going to take data, we're going to take points, and we're going to fit a quadratic function to those points. And so we'll see a couple different ways that we will do this. First of all, our learning targets for the day. We have three of them. I can use quadratic functions to model data. I can use quadratic models to analyze patterns and make predictions. And I can use technology to create a quadratic model from data. And so the first step is identifying, is it quadratic or not? Because if it's not quadratic, we wouldn't want to make a quadratic model. We'd want to do something else. If it was linear, we'd want to use a linear model. If it was something bigger than quadratic or other than quadratic that we haven't seen yet, we'll do what we'll do with those later on in the year. And so the first way of checking this is by looking at a table. And the other way is to graph the points. Those are the two easiest ways of checking to see if something is quadratic. Now looking at a table is by far more accurate if your points follow a certain pattern. And that pattern is specifically, do they, do the x's go up by the same value each time? So in this case, our x's are all going up by one each time. And so this is a table that we could look to see if it's quadratic. If we say went from 1 to 2 to 3 to 7 to 15, looking at a table would not do us any good, and we would have to graph the points. And so the first step, looking at a table, we want to make sure the x's go up by the same amount each time. In this case, it's 1, but it doesn't have to be. Second, we look at the y values. How much are they going up? In our case, from negative 4 to negative 1 is plus 3, from negative 1 to 2 is plus 3, 2 to 5 is plus 3, and 5 to 8 is plus 3. So these are all going up by the same amount. Does that mean it's quadratic? No. That means it's linear. Those are called the first differences. And if the first differences are the same as these are, it means it's linear. We saw that in Chapter 2. And so let's look at another table. First, let's check to make sure the x's go up by the same amount. And in this case, yep, they all go up by 2. And so now let's check the y values. So we get, for the first one, plus 3. And then 2 to 11 is plus 9. 11 to 26 is plus 15. And 26 to 47 is plus 21. So those are the first differences. Those are not the same, which means this is not linear. And so now we're going to find what are called the second differences. The second differences are just the differences of the differences. So we're going to use this row. So from 3 to 9, that's plus 6. From 9 to 15 is plus 6. And from 15 to 21 is plus 6. So those are all the same. That's called the second differences. The first differences tell us if it's a linear. The second differences tell if it's, if it's quadratic. And these are all the same. And so, yes, it is quadratic. And so, again, the first differences tell if it's, if it's linear, if it's x to the first power. The second differences tell if it's, if it's quadratic, x to the second power. The third differences, which we'll see next chapter, tells us if it's x to the third power. If we had 17th differences that were the same, it would be x to the 17th power. We would need a lot of points for that, though. And we won't go up that high at all this year. And so we look for the differences. The second differences tell us that it's quadratic because they're the same. So try one of these. Look at your table. Check the x values. Then check the y values, see if they're going up the same in the second difference to see if it's quadratic. I'll go ahead and pause this and come back when you're ready. Did you get that it was quadratic? I hope not. 
because this one should not be quadratic. So our first differences are all the same. It's going up by 1. So second difference is 1 to 3. It's going up by 2. And then 3 to 9. It's going up by 6. And then 9 to 27. It's going up by 18. And 27 to 81 is going up by 54. All right, so those aren't the same, which means it's not linear. And then from 2 to 6, that's 4. 6 to 18 is 12. So already we can see, nope, not quadratic. But 18 to 54 is 36. And so it is not quadratic. And that's really all we can say from it. It's not linear. It's not quadratic. Um, it is, in fact, uh, exponential, which we'll get to in Chapter 7. But you don't need to worry about that now. And so that would be looking at a table to figure out if it's quadratic. We can also graph the points and look to see, does it look like a quadratic? And this one, like it might look like a quadratic, but not necessarily be a quadratic. And it might not look like a quadratic, but still be a quadratic, depending on what we're looking at. So graphing is not the best way of doing it. But if you can't do it by a table, the graph is the next best shot. And so if we have some points, 0, 11, 1, 4, 4, negative 5, 5, negative 4, and 8, 11, we can graph those. So we need a graph. Then we can plot some points. Does this look like we could draw a quadratic through it? Oh, well, it's going down and coming back up again. So, yeah, it looks like it could be a quadratic. It's not going down and then continuing to go down. It's not level and then going up it's not a straight line so it looks like it could be a quadratic and in fact it is we can draw a quadratic through those points um but here you can see that that's ah, a little bit rough and then if you were only looking at say points in this part of the quadratic it would look like it was a line even there is a little curve to it but they look really straight so unless you have the vertex in there, it can be tough to tell if it's a quadratic from just the graph. All right, so now we're going to make quadratic functions. We're going to start out doing it from three points. So let's say we have a quadratic that goes through those three points. Now, it is possible to make a quadratic that goes through any three non-collinear points. So as long as the points aren't all in a straight line, you can make a quadratic that goes through them. How do you do that? Well, we know the equation of a quadratic is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. Well, we just need to figure out what a, b, and c are. We can plug in the points. We can plug in the point negative 2, 5 to get a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c equals 5. We can plug in the point negative 1, 0. And we can plug in the point 1, negative 2. So we can plug in those points and simplify. And we have a system of three equations. This is like what we did in Chapter 3. At the very end of Chapter 3, we dealt with systems of three equations. We also dealt with systems of three equations in Chapter 4. If you prefer to solve it using a system, go for it. I'm going to take the method of making it an augmented matrix, and then we're going to use our calculator because this is a skill we know how to use. May as well use it. So I change it into an augmented matrix, and then we can do this using the matrix function of our calculator. And so to do this, um, and again, I only have the TI-84s, 83s are similar. Um, if you have other types of Casio or other types of calculators like a Casio, it'll be different. But remember, we we looked at matrices um, last chapter. So the very first step here is we're going to need to enter the matrix. So to do that, we have to wait for my little video to catch up with me. It's still going. There we go. So to do that, we're going to have to go to the matrix menu. It's right down here. Remember, it's second matrix.
and then we can edit the first one or you can edit any of them but I'm going to choose the first one I don't want a one by one I want a three by four so change it to three by four and then we need to enter the matrix into the calculator now if you're following along at home which you should be doing right now this will take you less time than it takes me because pushing the buttons is a lot easier than pushing them with the mouse it just takes time anyway we're entering the matrix here um, the C row or the C column will always be just ones because it's always just plus C so it's 1C 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 and for that matter the first column will always be the second column squared all right so we get the matrix centered now we're gonna to want to have to quit out of this so that we don't accidentally put something into the matrix and so we'll go second quit eventually apparently I'm a little bit slow all right second quit now we can go back into the matrix menu go over to edit or to math sorry go to math we were just in edit And we're going to go down to RREF, because remember that stands for Row Reduced Echelon Form. Reduced Row Echelon Form. REF is um, Row Echelon Form. <clears throat> so RREF is Reduced Row Echelon Form. And that's the one that we're interested in. <clears throat> so we're going to pick that. And we're going to go back to the Matrix menu to choose the matrix we're going to put in there. For me, it's matrix A. It's the only matrix I have in here. So we can select that and hit enter. And we get this. So we have you know, x equals 1.3333, 3, 3, 3, 3, y equals negative 1, and z equals negative 2.33333. But we weren't solving for x, y, and z. This was a, b, and c. So our a value, our a coefficient, is 1.33333, 1 and 1 third. The B coefficient is negative 1, and the C coefficient is negative 2.333, negative 2 and a third. Uh, we can, remember, change these to be fractions by going to math and then choosing the two fraction button and hit enter. And those are a bit nicer. So A equals 4 thirds, B equals negative 1, C equals negative 7 thirds. And so we can just plug that right into this equation. We have this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. a is 4 thirds, b is negative 1, and c is negative 7 thirds. And that's our quadratic function from the matrix. Now, it shouldn't take quite as long to do that. Again, apparently my video was a bit slower than it needed to be, but um, that should be quick. Now, a lot of times, though, we also don't like the equals y at the end make it y equals, it's the same thing. All right, so that was if we have three points. If we have many points, that would be anything more than three, usually about five or six in what we're doing. Um, we're going to do it a different way. We're going to do regression. Now, you could pick three of these points and do the same thing, except that that might not collect all the points because these points might not make a perfect quadratic. A lot of times we're going to be using real data, real values, and real data is not perfect. A quadratic model might be the best model, but it will very rarely be a perfect model. And so instead of just picking three points and doing what we just did, setting up a system of equations, we're going to do regression. Now, some people might tell you to graph these points, sketch a quadratic of best fit, choose three points on that quadratic, and then do what we just did. I have issues with that because you're estimating a quadratic of best fit, and you're estimating points along that quadratic, and then you're doing very precise mathematical calculations on your estimates of estimates. There's better ways, and that would be using the least square regression for a quadratic. 
So let's see how to do this. First step, we want to get our calculator. And so the very first thing that we need to do in this is we need to have our five steps. We're going to enter the data. And so as we're sitting here waiting for me to catch up, these steps here are the same as what we did with linear equations, with linear modeling. It'll be the same the next time we do it as well. And so what we're going to do is first we have to enter the data. In order to enter the data, we are going to go to stat. And then edit. And oh, I have data already entered here. So to clear this out, we're going to go up and then clear. And then you can go down or you can hit enter. If you accidentally delete a list, you can get back to it by going back to the stat menu. And then number five is setup editor. You can select that. A couple times and that'll get your lists back um, but you want to clear the lists don't delete the lists all right now we can enter the data so one-fourth everyone always asks well, how do you do a fraction just one divided by four so you just do one divided by four and it won't show up as one divided by four it'll show up as 0.25 it'll change it into a decimal but that's okay because first, it'll keep the actual fraction in its memory. But second, these are going to be close. They're not going to be perfect. And so really, it'll keep enough digits that it's not going to be an issue. So we just keep entering our data. This is, again, where you guys are probably quicker than I am here. Then for one and a fourth, I find it's easier just to go five fourths. Then to try one and one fourth, like how does that work? Just five fourths. Then go over to list two and enter the y values. All right, our next step is we're going to want to graph the data. In order to graph the data, we are going to end up going to second stat plot. And quit out of it first if we want. Um, that way, again, we don't enter stuff where we don't want stuff. But now we're going to go second and then stat plot. And we're going to pick one of them. And we're going to have to set it up. First thing we need to do is we need to turn it on. And then choose the scatter plot. That's just the very first one. And then the X list. I put my X values in list one. I put my Y values in list two. Then the mark and the color are personal preference. So you have your calculator set up. Because after we get this, if we just graph it, we're not going to see anything probably because look at where our y values are. Chances are our window's not set up to go there. See? If we just graph it, eh, we don't see anything. We're going to have to zoom. So we're going to go to zoom. And then we want to zoom stat. It's number nine. So zoom stat. 
And there's our points. It looks kind of like a line because it's that part of the quadratic. If you put a ruler up to it, you can see that there's a curve to it. And if you do the second differences, you'll find the second differences are a lot closer than the first differences. But here's where one, where just by looking at the graph, it might not look quadratic. But we graph the data. Our next step is we're going to do the regression. Now the regression, we're going to go back into the stat menu. And then we're going to go over to Calc. Now this is a step that changes based on what regression you're doing. In Chapter 2, we did a linear, which was either 4 or 8. It doesn't matter which one you used. This chapter, we're going to look at quadratic regression. So number 5, quad reg. So you're going to select number 5. There's more regressions there. We get to LN, X, like these two, we get to in Chapter 7. These guys we get to in Chapter 6. Logistic you won't do until pre-cal. And even then, barely. So, quadratic regression. Notice the stuff you put into it is exactly the same. Our X list is in list 1. Our Y list is list 2. Then we're going to go down to store the regression equation. And we're going to put that in Y1. If you put your list in a different place, then you'd want to change your lists. So we're going to store the regression equation. We're going to put it in Y1. Remember to get there. It's going to be alpha and then trace. And we can pick Y1. You could also pick any other Ys. Then calculate. And there's our equation. We have ax squared plus bx plus c, where a equals a number, b equals a number, c equals a number. The r squared is how close is it? The closer to 1, the better the fit. So you want to write that down at this point. So we have y equals 101.7x squared plus 114.2x plus 66.4. Now, when you write it down, do not copy down the screen. I don't want y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a equals something, b equals something, c equals something. Put those numbers in the equation. Round as you need to, but put those numbers into the equation. Then the fourth step, we're going to check the graph. So just hit the graph button again. It's already set up, and notice how there's a slight curve to this, and it hits the points quite nicely. And so we check the graph. Hey, it worked. If it didn't work, it would be blatantly not working. So this one, yeah, that fits nicely. So we've checked the graph, and then step five is answer the question. Make sure that you answer the question. This got us from x equals one fourth to x equals one point one one and one fourth. What if it was asking what about when x equals two? What would it equal? What would it equal when x equals negative five? Make sure you answer the question. And that would be from many points. So from three points, we can do a system of equations. From many points, use the regression feature of the calculator. If you don't have your own calculator, make sure you're working in class to get that done. Um, go through and like do those couple problems um, in class, then focus on the other ones after that. Anyway, that was the end of this topic. We saw how to check to see if it's quadratic, and then how to find the quadratic model from either three points or more than three points. Um, so I'll see you next time, and until then, happy mathing.